Well, I want to start by welcoming everybody uh, to this program. Um, of course, the Velistas Mind Mirror 6 user manual explains everything that I'm going to show you, but I think I'm going to show you also some tips and techniques that go beyond the manual insofar as being able to um, analyze data. And um, as we do for the Monroe Institute, for Dawson Church, his studies, and others, we've developed some um, sort of best practices. Um, but also, uh, some of what I'm going to show you is not in the user manual because it's part of the Mind Mirror Features Pack, which is an extra $200. It's a software option that gives you, most importantly, coherence reports and up to 100 hertz pattern statistics. So, um, and in the process of showing you these technicalities, I hope that uh, I will share with you what you perceive to be some very interesting experiences that a couple of super conscious people uh, who have attended programs at the Monroe Institute have encountered during their meditations and uh, indeed shown uh, very high and expanded mind mirror patterns uh, as a result of their experiences. So I want to start with uh, a woman named, uh, I'm going to call her M. I have her permission to share her brainwaves, but she didn't let me know if I could share her name, so I'll just call her M. She is an attorney from um, Holland, and uh, she actually was attending her very first program at the Monroe Institute. And she doesn't have a meditation program uh, or practice either. Um, but she has attended some, uh, or at least one, uh, training for mediumship. And uh, she's definitely got the brain waves for it, as you will see. So I'll just jump right in and share screens with you and uh, start showing you, um, first of all, her report that was given at the end of the program. Uh, and this, this one took place in February during uh, what's called a discovery program, which is what they call the programs that we monitor with the mind mirror. As you will see with her opening baseline, uh, she has some really interesting patterns, uh, particularly with regard to her alpha. Okay, here we go. Um, so the opening baseline consists of three parts. The first is eyes open, lasts for a minute to a minute and a half, uh, and then eyes closed. And recently we have begun to ask people to uh, not just have their eyes open and let their minds wander, but in order to give them a real test for the eyes open awakened mind pattern to make sure that they have some sort of inner uh, or interior awareness as they sit there with eyes open. And this has actually made a huge difference in our baselines. And so that's what she was instructed to do. Um, when she sat there with her eyes open, she had this dominant um, 15 and 19 hertz bars of beta and some alpha, but not a whole lot. Um, and in fact, uh, you can see that I had to, because she is producing uh, amplitudes up in the 100 hertz range, I had to run her statistics on the um, 100 hertz awakened mind, and I'll show you in a few moments how to get those statistics. Um, and 43% awakened mind, you know, not bad for a 100 hertz pattern, but we've seen a whole lot higher. And um, for Evolved Mind, that's always going to be low on the 100 hertz scale. And uh, for Gamma Synchrony 35, which is not bad at all, uh, anything above 35 on the 64 hertz scale or the 100 hertz scale is considered to be significant. Um, but still, her dominant uh, category here is not alpha, which is what we would look for in an eyes up and awakened mind pattern. Um, I'll show you in a few minutes also, once we get into the ballista screens, uh, how to look at the other thing that's important to us during the baseline, and that's always to pull up an alpha amplitude window, and it's just there under view and summary. Um, so you can see that in the eyes open, there's a lot less 
alpha uh, amplitude than the moment after the moment she closed her eyes, her alpha almost doubled uh, and stayed pretty stable during eyes closed. But then once we move toward the third part of the opening baseline, which is the animal sensualization, an actual alpha theta meditation that lasts only about 15 minutes, but always gives people really good insights. Her alpha is uh, dropping off a pretty good bit. You see the, all those dips in the data? So this is telling us from the get-go, number one, whether the subject uh, or the meditator has eyes open alpha, um, and she does have it, just not as strong an amplitude. And second, whether the alpha is stable or if it's inconsistent. Her, I wouldn't go so far as to call hers inconsistent because if you look down here uh, at the, the five microvolts region, which is where I'm running the cursor, well, that's all completely stable, but she does have these big, huge flares. So this gives us some information uh, for a baseline, but we need a lot more to say whether she has eyes open alpha or not. Um, that baseline is repeated at the end of the week uh, at the Monroe Institute, and so we're comparing the statistics and whether the alphas become more stable, whether it's increased with eyes open and things like that. But then when she closed her eyes, um, her pattern changed completely, as you can see here, still on the 100 hertz scale. Now she's up at 72 percent uh, awakened mind reward, so that is very significant on the 100 hertz scale. It's even significant on the 64 hertz scale. Um, her evolved mind is 57%, and, but that's because of this rounding here. See that? Other than this right here, we would be looking at uh, very close to an evolved mind circle there. Um, most telling is her 71% rewards for gamma synchrony. And this is just with her sitting there, no supportive music, um, nothing at all, just sitting and closing her eyes. So you can see the difference in this pattern. The moment she closes her eyes, out comes her alpha, uh, and that beta, uh, those, that 19 hertz beta band completely reduced out. There's only the 15 hertz beta here. So that's the production of alpha is why her patterns, uh, statistics, or her rewards increased so much. Now, when she starts to use her uh, awareness during the animal meditation, you see a completely different pattern. In fact, you could uh, fix it so we can look at the two together. So what happens is her higher frequencies quiet down here in the right brain, and her uh, left brain, beta, gamma, all the way up to 100 hertz, actually increases considerably. Um, but still, uh, uh, even more of an awakened mind, 77%, 51%, and then a swapping 75% rewards for gamma synchrony. So what we can say right now is that with her eyes closed, this woman uh, has got a super conscious pattern simply because uh, she is uh, producing gamma all the way up to 100 hertz. And so then I took these uh, close-ups, these uh, segments of the uh, session when she was sensualizing herself as a hawk during the animal meditation. And you can see that she has this beautiful uh, right hand evolved mind flare. Um, she's actually got an upturned delta, which says that she's very much in touch with her unconscious mind uh, and its content. And then over here, you can see it's even left and right side for this upturn. Um, but some very significant amplitudes up here in the high frequencies. And that's pretty rare. You don't really see that uh, with everyone. Most people are going to have completely flat uh, amplitudes up here in 69, 79, and 91, and maybe some or maybe none at all at 59 and 49. So remembering uh, that we're looking at 100 hertz uh, pattern amplitudes is really uh, important here. So then uh, I'm going to switch over to the display in a moment and show you how to uh, use the screens. But first I want to show you this overview. Um, and this, this was 
a program wherein there were no verbal instructions other than what Bob Holbrook told people at the beginning of this of the meditations. And that was sometimes to connect with love and compassion or just let your mind flow. And indeed, this is what we call a free flow meditation, where you can do anything you want. It's called free phase shift. Um, and you can see immediately that her averaged uh, brain waves up in these high frequencies are even more amplified. And in fact, now exceed her uh, alpha, which looks really good with regard to the ratio to her theta and a beautiful pattern. If you took this away and drew, drew a line here, like so, then you would be looking at a 100 hertz awakened mind pattern. If you took this line here and drew this, you would be looking at a 100 hertz gamma synchrony pattern. So what's actually happening here is that the software is penalizing her for both the awakened mind and the gamma synchrony patterns for these high amplitudes. And that's just a limitation of the software. We can't do anything about that. But when we see this, and then we see the pattern statistic numbers, well, we know that she's not being adequately rewarded for what looks like a super, super conscious pattern. And indeed, it's awakened mind. Well, that's the 64 hertz scale. Let me pull on up here. Awakened mind 64, you see how that score is lower. Um, evolved mind 50, well, it's plenty rounded, so the evolved mind pattern likes it. And gamma synchrony 67, and that's lower than the, you know, 75, 71% that she had before. But just as a descriptor, what happened during this meditation for her, uh, as she listened to the binaural beats with the uh, SAM uh, frequencies in it, uh, is that she um, connected with her deceased grandmother and a friend, and then other spirit people, and then there was a huge crowd of them, and then these light beings uh, appeared who urged her to move further on and up, and she felt an ascension in her spirit, and by the end of uh, the music, which lasted, that's a whole 40-minute meditation, she was smoke traveling through uh, the multiverse, not the universe. And so what's really nice, uh, in the way that we do the programs at TMI is that we give people these uh, questionnaires to fill out, post-exercise questionnaires to fill out at the end of each meditation. And we ask them to pinpoint when they had uh, experiences. And so what she did uh, was have an experience that um, she was able to say, oh, well, this happened at uh, a third, uh, a fourth, in the middle and then toward the end of the session. So that helps us really kind of narrow down what's going on for her. So uh, now I'm gonna share with you the mind mirror window and start to go through this session so you can actually see uh, what is, how to, how we run the data on these, on these uh, sessions. So, um, First, of, and as always, we go to open existing session, uh, and uh, I'm just going to pull up the freeze, free phase shift for her. I don't want to load the saved screen set because that's just going to give me four mind mirror patterns, and I don't want to do that. And so I'm going to show you how we always do this. And really, if you are doing significant research on your brainwaves, you should always follow the same protocol. And the first thing you do is go into view and summary. She is uh, the person plugged into port three. So first we're gonna check her signal quality. There is a question on the post-exercise questionnaire that asks, um, so I wonder if I could, no, I wanna show you how to do the whole thing. So this has actually picked up some artifact markers from other sessions I was looking at. So I'm just gone into the right click markers and I'm going to say, just take them all out. Um, so 
we're going to check her signal quality for the left brain and the right brain. And in the post-exercise questionnaire, hopefully she has told me whether she moved or not. But um, she took the question about movement literally and said, yes, um, there was movement, an uplifting, an ascension to higher realms. <laughs> well, we weren't talking about that kind. We meant... Um, did you move in your seat, which could have caused a loosening of the electrodes? Um, and indeed, her ascension to higher frequencies could have been the reason for these breaks in signal quality. So as tedious as it is, it's incredibly important to take these out of the session. So I'm going to take time to do it because I want to show you the whole regimen here. Um, it's made even more tedious because sometimes these artifact markers don't behave as they should. Steve Clark says, if you start at the end, you're less likely to run into any problems. So I'm just right clicking inside the window. Um, I'd rather be safe than sorry. Uh, I have seen this recently at TMI where uh, people had such uh, serious uh, losses of signal quality that it fouled up the patterns for as much as 10 seconds. But those uh, problems in signal quality are going to be of this nature here, where you are losing from 1.0 all the way down to 0, 0.0. In this case, it's probably 0 0.5. That means 0 0.5 means a 95% loss in signal quality. That's going to cause the screen to roll. It's going to... Um, cause what looks like a surge in delta, possibly a surge in gamma. Uh, and um, factor, worst of all, factor into the mind mirror summary as real brain waves when it's not. So what we're doing here is cleaning this up before we run the mind mirror summary so that what you're going to get is the cleanest possible data. Um, <laughs> so now it's happened. Uh, the thing that we don't want to have happen, and it's that, um, do you see how in between the artifact markers now, the part that I isolated is not grayed, but what's grayed is the actual data. So in this case, I just try to defeat it in the only way I know how until Steve Clark gets this fixed. All right, so I lucked up there, and adding a second artifact marker did return me to where I was before. But because the thing is getting a little uh, glitchy, I'm not going to bother to take this out. That's a small amount of data loss. It probably wouldn't even be enough to show up in the SEMG bar at the bottom of the mine there. But this one, um, that's 20% uh, loss of signal quality, that one I would want to take out, you see. Not that one, but that one. So then I want to see, do these correlate? They actually, in part, do. This one is taken care of. This one is taken care of by these artifact markers, but not this one. So now I really do, in fact, I have to take out both of these. Okay, so now what it's done, <clears throat> because I performed an operation in here, it's copied the markers over from the first window, which is fine, just what we want it to do. So now I've checked the signal quality um, and gotten most of the difficulties out of this. And like I say, I'm not going to bother with this now, but if you are running a study, you would want to make sure that this is not in there. Honestly, it might only make a 1% difference in the um, mind mirror training summary, but who knows, that could turn out to be the difference between um, a positive result at the end of the study and not having a positive result. So it's best to really clean up the data as much as you can. So that's step number one, to check signal quality in both hemispheres. Step number two, is to go after the SEMG artifact amplitude windows. Again, for both sides of the brain. You see that the markers have copied on over. They should copy over to any uh, amplitude window that we bring up from here on. And so let's stack them. Um, 
And so what you see right away is that um, the 5.0 cutoff that we want to be aware of that anything really close like that is to 5.0 and certainly anything above 5.0 microvolts is considered um, questionable data. Not necessarily bad data, but questionable data. And that's because, as you can see, her sort of baseline um, movement and tension artifact readings are 0.5 microvolts compared to nearly 5 microvolts. So this immediately is suspicious. Uh, how suspicious? Well, we're going to take a look at that. Um, the reason that we are uh, ambivalent, I guess, or uncertain about whether this is artifact or not, because, I mean, honestly, uh, other researchers might say anything above that shift, uh, left click, green dotted line is artifact. But as you're going to see, it's not artifact at all. The reason it's showing up here in this window is because this is where she starts producing a great deal of gamma. And um, gamma is interpreted by the SEMG artifact algorithm as noise. And you won't know that until you pull up other windows and see actually what's going on here. And in this case, we're going to actually have to go into the mind mirror patterns to see if this is real gamma because it's such so different um, from her baseline down here. Uh, another thing we can say about this is it's probably real gamma because it's sustained. So the other thing that we do in these Monroe Institute studies, and I dare to do right now, is we would take out all the spikes. The spike says there was some quick movement. She could have caught her breath. She could have wiggled her eyebrows. I would actually, I'm not going to do it here now, but in the Monroe Institute studies, in the studies I've been working on for Dawson Church, I would isolate all of this from here to here and take it out and call it real SEMG artifact because it spikes. I'd even take these, I probably wouldn't take these spikes out because they're uh, 1.5 microvolts, but this one, this big spike here, e even if that were part of what looks like a sustained gamma, I'd get that out of there because it's not real data. You see, you see the differences there? Yeah, so we don't want to trust that. Um, so after I took out the SEMG spikes, and um, this right click function refresh is going to copy this new set of artifact markers over to this other one. Uh, after that, then it is safe to look at the, uh, my, to run the mind mirror summary. But I'm not going to do that just yet because now that these windows are open, the thing I want to do is look at the whole session, uh, well, the session as a whole. Uh, and the best way to do that is this beautiful new, and everybody has it in the software, uh, composite summary. She's on three, and so how you get the composite summary is that you click on the first thing you want, and I always get the same ones. You can choose whichever ones you want. And I press down the control key on the computer keyboard and tap what it is I want, and then uh, it lets me travel on down and make my selections, and it's going to show them all in this composite display. So I always go for, you definitely want to know what alpha is doing. You certainly want to know what theta is doing. And um, low gamma, delta, mid gamma, and upper gamma. It's going to take a moment. Uh, this, this is typically a delay anyway, because you can see it's having to select all of these things. And I've complicated it with all these artifact markers, too. So you could look at it like this, but it's a lot easier if you simply um, take the uh, left click and then uh, hit your right hand arrow 
in fact, I'll do it for you. Let me size it up so you can see the differences, and this will show you why you want to decide how many right arrow clicks you're going to give it. All right, so you see how the data is just sort of all merged together there. So I hit the right arrow one time. Now it's smoothed that data. But watch, it's also, as it smooths the data to separate the data lines for each brainwave category, well, what it's going to do is decrease the amplitude. So I hit the right arrow a second time. Now it's gone from over 20 to 15. Uh, it's still pretty mucked up. You could, you might be able to stop there. I'm going to hit the down arrow and check. All right. It still looks pretty uh, conglomerated to me. Uh, so I'm going to hit uh, the arrow the third time and then a fourth time. I don't like to go any more than four times because then you start really losing track of your amplitude. Now it's true, not to confuse matters, but because it's important that um, these amplitudes in this composite display and in these amplitude windows are not going to match the amplitudes that you see in the mind mirror window, the mind mirror display. That's because these are done on FFT, which is uh, taking an average of the previous 10 uh, segments of time uh, versus the mind mirror, which is showing you the greatest amplitude from second to second. So we're actually uh, going to be showing significant amplitude differences from the composite display to begin with. Typically, that doesn't matter because we're really using this composite display uh, simply to uh, get a look at what's happened in the whole mind mirror session. And you always want to get one for the left and the right brain. Same thing, hold the control key down, beta, alpha, uh, low gamma, delta, mid gamma, and upper gamma. And then continue. All right. So then we're just going to line these guys up so we can see them both at the same time. A little bit more here, a little bit more here. Okay, and so now a left click, four uh, right arrows, and the data separates so we can see it better, and then one, two. All right, so now you notice that um, the scale, the amplitude scale here on her left brain is 11, and it's 9 in the right brain. Now that's because ballistas has selected the scale that shows the highest amplitudes. We don't really want that. Um, what we want is for these scales to match so we can differentiate and see where the amplitudes diverge. So to walk you through that, if you left click and then right click for display options, um, then you can go to, and I would just say nine because it typically selects higher than I ask it to select. So it's showing 10. Um, and then I'm going to change this one to say 9. So it will match the other one. Sometimes you have to play with this a little bit. Uh, the main thing is you want these two scales uh, to match. And so we draw this guy up a little bit. And uh, you can see right away that uh, she was producing more left brain delta here. Oh, and to, if you haven't used the composite summaries yet, uh, there is a legend here which shows them, uh, shows you which is which brainwave category. But suffice it to say now that they're the same as in the mind mirror display. So I'll just name the colors as I point out what's happening in various categories. So here you see uh, a big surge of uh, left brain delta in this purple. Not as big a surge in the right brain. Uh, 
but here the right brain delta is stronger uh, and so you it's good to you know just make these comparisons with, because that's going to these various activities in the various categories is going to ultimately tell you why she had that experience why uh, her brain waves are and what the behavior of her brain waves means how her mind works basically so i said that um with this many uh artifacts going in here due to signal quality breaks now a lot of this session is suspect uh, in other words is this real delta well the first thing we can do is look at the signal quality and the SEMG artifact. There's nothing in the SEMG artifact that we have to worry about. Um, but what about signal quality? No, there's no break in the signal quality. So this is probably real delta. And that means she plugged into something. And she did it at the same time that she had this first little gamma surge. It was brief, but it increased over here after this movement or whatever it was. And it wasn't just a gamma spike, but it's actually more of a sustained gamma. But then here uh, we see a much more sustained gamma. And just to, as a header on this, the bottom three lines are gamma. Uh, I can size this up so you can see this better. Uh, this, this bottom line is upper gamma, meaning uh, 65 to 100 hertz. This second line, it's not very separate. She's actually, they're almost blended together. They're very similar in colors, too. Let's see where they diverge. They're hardly diverging at all. You can see the double lines here. Um, what I can do is show you the colors here so the color scale uh, so it's it's purplish for low gamma 35 to 45 hertz red for mid gamma which is 45 to 65 hertz and then upper gamma is kind of orange is uh, 65 to 100 hertz so you're going to always find those three gamma bars at the bottom of the screen because they're always going to be the ones with the least amplitude. So that means that when you start seeing high amplitude gamma crossing over uh, her dominant in most people amplitude green theta, then that was a serious event there if it was not noise. Uh, so we could easily go back and say, well, was that a signal quality issue right there? Well, there was a signal quality issue. You can actually see it, but it doesn't seem like there's a signal quality. There is a fairly fast drop off of this gamma right here. But then it bumps back up, you see? It's coming back, it's flaring, and now it's flaring with the delta. But are these the result of, um, signal quality issues or SEMG issues, or is it real? Well, that's the point at which we actually have to go into the session and look at the mind mirror patterns, and there's just absolutely no way around it. Um, so this gives us an opportunity to actually look at her brainwave patterns. And in the end, the final judge of the validity of the patterns is gonna be sitting there and watching that mind mirror um, so just to get a heads up, well, this is at 51 seconds. That's where the big delta surge has <clears throat> showed up. And we already said that that's neither artifact nor signal quality issue. Um, but the big surge of gamma really starts right about here, which is, if you look at the second timer clock, 928. So let's look at the mind mirror. Uh, uh, display for both of those timings and then you see for yourself this way whether you think these are legitimate patterns or not so 
So this is at the very beginning of the session. I think that first delta surge was 40 seconds, but you can already see that her delta is really uh, having some amplification changes. So it's 17 seconds now. And you can see that she's got quite a lot of upper gamma, upper and mid gamma. Look at that delta. So what this is saying, if you remember what Delta is all about, is that she is reaching out for a spiritual or an informational or a healing connection uh, with uh, the field itself in her low frequencies. Uh, and that's pretty darned interesting because uh, In fact, uh, I'm going to put this on auto attenuate so you can see the extent of this, these delta outreaches. I saw one earlier at 70 microvolts. Uh, now it's 9, 40, 60, 40, 50. This is a lot of delta. Typically, you only see this in healers. Um, now, she, I don't think she got this ability from being a lawyer, although <laughs> they certainly have to um, show some empathy for people. So <clears throat> maybe, you know, maybe uh, it has something to do with him empathy or hypervigilance. Um, but more than likely, this is actually where she made contact with those uh, spirits who showed up, uh, either because she was reaching or because they showed up and her delta responded. So you can see here uh, a big delta on the left and the very next one second later, this big flare of gamma up at the top. Uh, and then her entire pattern uh, amplifies almost as if she's come into contact with something. Uh, and most importantly, her SEMG bar down here at the bottom is showing that she's extremely relaxed. If this were red, this would indicate a signal quality issue. It's green, so there's no signal quality, and it's well below five. Um, so so this is, these are her brain waves, and this is why I say that when you go to the mind mirror display, then you see everything all at once. Of course, that takes a lot of time, which is why we're so happy to have the composite displays to give us a heads up on what's going on here. So she's really very much in a higher state of consciousness with these high frequency gamma waves uh, and uh, her uh, very strong flares of alpha. In the left, she's got a peak of nine hertz. On the right, she's got a peak at 10.5 hertz, peak amplitude referring to the strongest amplitude in any given category. Uh, and you usually don't want to see a split alpha peak like that. But if she's running into dead people, well, she might well have a split alpha peak. You can see how this delta really is uh, driving this whole experience. And indeed, we did see all those delta flares that were a cue to that, a clue to that. That is so close to being a 100 hertz evolved mind pattern because their theta is amplified out. Um, but what I promised you here is that we would look at um, her composite summary to try to see about these big gamma flares that started at 702. So let's just scroll on over there and stop a bit short of it so we can kind of look at this trend. All right, so that's, she's already got, as you can see, a lot of gamma occurring right there. Now, this is in the artifact section, right? And I actually took that out of the data. But as you're going to see, the artifact was probably caused by movement rather than the movement causing these brainwaves because they're they're pretty consistent aren't they now let me get it off of auto attenuate that makes it hard for you to see the changes 
is tapered to like about eight microvolts. Here goes that delta again. All right, so now we're in the uh, big gamma increase. segment and we'll just watch her a little bit. It's almost as if she's reaching out with her left brain delta and you're seeing those frequencies rise, or the information rise up into the higher frequencies and then the higher frequencies are amplified to receive them or it could be the other way around that her field connection and delta is enhanced because she's turning on her gamma or that those spirit beings are causing her to resonate with higher frequencies. I mean, it's just conjecture. Nobody actually knows, knows the answers here, but the process is really interesting to watch, isn't it? And you can see the SEMG bar is very quiet. And there's this propensity toward uh, right brain evolved mind flares. See that? So this is where she's finding her unity with the field in the right brain. It's her left brain that's processing it. Actually, that was a really nice example there. Let's see if I can find that again. It's not quite the one. That's pretty good. There it is. So you see the rounding here? So there, there's the right brain evolved mind unity with those spirit beings or her perception that there are spirit beings there. And here is her left brain saying, oh, interesting, these are spirit beings, <laughs> you know, and processing it analytically. I mean, this is, you know, this is literal. So what you're seeing here uh, is the depths to which we often go in these studies so we can understand uh, because that SEMG window says that there, all right, so here we have a perfect example um, of this kind of screen roll that is the reason we artifact out problems. All right, so she, uh, she's fine here, she's fine here. And then out goes the delta and she probably hooked into something and then there was a disturbance in the electrodes and a signal quality issue. And you can see that from the red SEMG bar here. And it lasts one second, two seconds, three seconds, four seconds, five. So about four seconds, which is why we don't get too close to the, uh, the strike or the spike in the data because we want to take out all four seconds, right? So can we say that she had an experience with spirit beings? Well, no, because we're not in her head. But something happened, and it really happened here. This is where that, uh, so look, no problem with the SEMG bar. Something happened here. This is a ton of gamma, especially up in the highest frequencies. But let me just check it before I say that, because I certainly would for a study. I would want to just check. This is at 956. Where is it? Nope. That's all clean. So that's her. See that? No signal quality problems, no SEMG problems. So the SEMG window, you see, is going to show that big gamma flare as noise because it doesn't know any difference. 
it looks at that and says, well, it had to be caused by noise, but that's not noise. That's her having an interior experience. And we can check very easily, just like they did in Max Cade's time, uh, that this is not an SEMG issue through the SEMG bar at the bottom. This thing doesn't get enough credit, but it's really quite an extraordinary that he included that in the first one. Um, all of the studies of gamma uh, that have been uh, published or subject to scrutiny at present uh, because they're saying that they're contaminated by SEMG, but here Max Cade was looking at that from the get-go. So now that we uh, say, okay, this is, this is real data, uh, we can run the mind mirror summary. Ah, right, you could run it before. Uh, and we're going to run it on the whole session because it's going to delete all of these uh, gray spaces that we uh, have isolated with artifact markers. And this is a 40 minute session, so it's going to take a few seconds to run this. All right, so uh, here it is. Uh, what I typically do is take the training summary up here and uh, my mirror window here. This is how we snip it for reports. We get these two guys the same length. Uh, but you want to have your mind mirror kind of horizontal. You know, if it's vertical, it just doesn't look like much of anything. But if it's a little horizontal, um, it makes more visual sense to me anyway. And then get the training summary plot down here or possibly the alpha amplitude or another amplitude window or even a composite display. And then you can just snip out this whole thing right here and it's nice and even. So the first thing you want to do is accumulate statistics so that your 31% is contained inside of your 56%. See that? And then left click on your mind mirror and hit the F so you can see all the high frequencies. So this is like a brainstorm of gamma, isn't it? I mean, she's got a beautiful alpha-theta ratio, and in fact, she has 82% rewards for alpha-theta ratio on training level 5, which is what we're typically looking at, even on the 100 hertz patterns. On the 64 hertz patterns, 75 to 98%, uh, those are the pattern statistics scored at training level 5, for um, advanced meditators, psychics, healers, mediums, um, and other highly developed and spiritually conscious people. Uh, so you would think, oh, 56, that's way below 75, but this is the 100 hertz scale, see? So that's a good score, pretty good score for uh, 100 hertz. 66, again, the rounding of this pattern is causing that. 51% for gamma synchrony on 100 hertz. Uh, that's really good. That's a, that's a high score. Anything above 35% we take notice of, and especially on the 100 hertz scale. So then we have the mind mirror summary, and we say, that's we've now just about exhausted uh, what we do for most studies, except that if you have the mind mirror features pack and the coherence windows, then you can take it a step further and go into view and coherence reports. And the first thing you want to do is look at the correlation coefficient. Um, what that is, is an average uh, of the output of each frequency bar uh, over the course of the session. So it's remembering uh, left and right channels three and seven. So what this is saying uh, is that these frequencies across the bottom, 0.5 to 100, uh, have high coherence at 0 0.8, have the most high coherence at 0 0.8 in the higher frequencies. 
not so much on the low frequencies, except for one thing right here. You see that this is higher in the very lowest frequencies uh, than her delta, the rest of her delta, and her theta, and her alpha. Uh, really, she doesn't get coherence uh, at the same five point same point five until she gets up here in the uh, 19 or 18 hertz range. So this is very unusual to see near coherence in the high frequencies because that's where most people or are, are disorganized. Um, and you would want them to be more organized, more coherent in the high frequencies because the purpose of gamma is to create coherence in the rest of the brain. So let me just take a moment here and talk to you uh, about coherence. Um, coherence is uh, has come into great prominence over, I don't know, I guess the may, maybe the past even five years, uh, but it was something that uh, Max Cade understood the importance of from the get-go because uh, Max said that the doorway to higher states of consciousness is amplitude symmetry in the left and the right brain. Um, now he did say that almost everyone is asymmetrical uh, in an ordinary state of consciousness and as they start moving into meditation uh, their brainwave, their hemispheres start moving into uh, symmetry. Uh, but what has been discovered by scientists publishing studies over the past at least five years, um, maybe longer, maybe 10 years, uh, is that when you have amplitude symmetry, which is another way of saying coherence, um, there is a possibility that you will move into synchrony, which is uh, the uh, matching of your uh, left and right brain frequencies so that if they were out of phase before they move into phase and the left and right brain are riding the same wave uh, same wave patterns I should say um, when that happens when you move into coherence and at the highest levels of coherence into synchrony or synchronization um, what's actually happening is that the photons uh, in the neurons, the light power inside of the neurons uh, or the nerve cells in the brain in those frequencies are powering up uh, as they start to communicate with each other. So say um, you have alpha synchrony. Well, that means that in the back of the head, everywhere in the head uh, where you have alpha frequencies then um, there's an organization that starts to take place with alpha as a foundation um, that has been known since max's time or at least max knew it um, but what hasn't been known is that gamma causes the same sort of synchronization uh, just because it's a faster uh, frequency, the brain is moving faster, and it uh, begins to synchronize the lobes of the brain, the temporals, the occipitals, the parietals, and the frontals. And then you have that same sort of phase synchrony operating inside your brain. Um, and it's a governing principle for all of the other frequencies gamma is so that it starts to bring all of the other frequencies toward coherence and into phase so it would be important to increase your gamma coherence so your gamma can do its best work for the other frequency bands you see that so the neurons are powering up um, and actually spreading out through scalp diffusion uh, 
into neighboring neurons and uh, hopefully into uh, synchronization of the lobes. And when that happens, the benefit, the simple benefit, is a faster and more efficient flow of information. The brain is talking to itself better. Uh, there is greater clarity. This is associated with insights, with higher states of consciousness, uh, with um, out-of-body experiences. Gamma itself is, but gamma as a synchronizer of the brain. Uh, super learning, uh, lucid dreaming, aha insights, revelations, spontaneous illuminations, all of those things uh, are the result of uh, gamma production, number one, gamma coherence, number two, gamma synchronization, number three, and the whole brain synchronization that is the typical result of gamma output. So let's go back to this and um, just say that the fact that she has this coherence in, you know, it's not all the way to point eight, it's really at a point six, point five, point six uh, in the higher frequencies. That's a very good thing. But it's not translating into our lower frequencies, you see, because that coherence is lower, except for one thing. Uh, if we go to view and coherence reports and the summary and to get it for. Um, low delta, then we're going to see really high coherence. And the coherent summary is 0 0.7. That is the marks above that. That and above is high coherence. So she's got very high coherence, mid-range to high coherence, and above high coherence for super low delta. And so those are the delta bars that you've been watching uh, her produce uh, that seem like they're her gateway. Um, I looked at all of her other coherent summaries for each and every um, category, and I'll just show you one of them. Uh, we'll just look at her, say, let's say, high alpha, since she's got so much gamma. And it's not very high coherence at all. And the co correlation coefficient just showed you that. Um, it's really kind of low to mid-range. So what we would want to see and what did in fact happen for her uh, during this week of training at the Monroe Institute is that her uh, lowest frequencies became increasingly coherent, uh, very possibly because of or in conjunction with her low delta and what could be a kind of biofeedback loop uh, to her high gamma. And just one other thing to look at here. Um, this dear little summary plot is very often, uh, I don't want to say misunderstood, um, but it's not given enough uh, credibility here. So we're just going to play with it for a minute because it does give you a ton of information. So what she said, uh, M said, was that she encountered these spirits. She gave this 10 on the mystical scale, which includes um, everything from pure awareness, unity with something larger than yourself, awe and reverence, bliss and indefinable peace, surrounded in light, feeling of universal love, ultimate reality. She gave uh, a 10 to this. And she said that uh, one fourth, one half, three fourths, and at the end, which is where she uh, had her most profound and extraordinary experiences in this meditation. And so this is a timeline across the bottom. So you can actually see if we have a correlation uh, with the profundity of her patterns, no matter what they were. So if we look at just delta generation, right up here at the front that's where we saw her have those delta patterns um yep she's got some but if you take a look at this that's a lot and that's training level four so training level five means 50 percent compliance with the pattern um 
So training level four rewards uh, in that training summary are really uh, something we take great note of. But training level three, that's extraordinary for anybody to have rewards at training level three at all. And you can see that she's got a lot. So you want to look at the, um, the clusters on the uppermost training levels, and that's gonna be the clue to where the person had the most profound experiences. Well, you certainly do see at the beginning this delta. This is within the first fourth. This is certainly, the first, this is the half. Um, this is the end. There are your dots, concentrations of dots in all of those places. And so, well, that aligns for sure. Yeah, she said three-fourths of the way. Not so much delta there, but let's see what the other patterns look like. And we're most interested in awakened mind. Fourth, half, three-fourths, not at the end though. Evolved mind, a lot in the middle. A lot at the beginning too. And then gamma synchrony. Maybe that's, that's somewhere, it's either the first fourth or the first half. Um, that's certainly in three fourths. That's right toward the end. So we do have some agreement uh, with this. Now, um, so what, what can we say so far? Well, we can say that she gets shortchanged in the rewards because she's got so much gamma for that amount of alpha. But even shortchanged, uh, given the experiences she had, these are still excellent scores on the 100 hertz scale. Um, what I would be inclined to do at this point um, is go back to her composite summaries just to understand, now that I have a deeper understanding uh, of what I was seeing, is there any, are there any trends here that, that I can grasp? Well, the first thing, Look at that delta in the purple, huge amount of delta. And then I would want to see, well, are her categories tracking? Are they firing some simultaneously? Hmm, not as much here. More here. Here, they're tracking very nicely. They're very nicely right here, you see? That flare in alpha matched by that flare in theta, matched by that flare in low, gamma, low and mid gamma. We don't so much know what's running the whole show, but we can say that this delta here played a huge part in it. I, I've even been crazy enough to start clicking around here to say, wait, who came first? And with the... Um, Timer clock, you can see. Well, that's at 53 seconds. That's at, if we be very careful, 57 seconds. That's at 53. Get right down here in the little valley, right before it surges, 57. So the delta flare kicked off the gamma. Uh, now that we saw that that actually was not a signal quality issue, um, it looks like that delta kicked off the gamma again here. There it goes again. Actually, this is where her signal qualities things happen with this delta. Not every time, but some of the time. Looks like it kicked off the gamma. There it is again, only this time they went together. That's almost simultaneous. Uh, 1455 and 1453. It's really kind of hard to tell because that artifact marker it might be simultaneous. Um, it looks like she becomes increasingly coherent in my definition of coherent, which is that the data lines are tracking each other um, and not crisscrossing over each other as the session proceeds. And in fact, in the right brain, you can see more and better and closer tracking. So we would want to have to have high coherence 
meeting, readings and the coherence reports, these would have to have the same amplitudes, and they don't. You can see right here, this is six micro, this is 5.5 microvolts, I think. Yeah. It's not obeying me, but I can just drive my eyeball to the, there it goes, finally. 6.6, uh, .6, and this one here, his friend in the right brain, is 4.5. So, two things there. One is that to have high coherence readings for this delta at this point in time, they would have to have the same amplitude and they do not. So they're gonna show up as not having high delta coherence. But do we care, number two? And actually, some of the time we do and some of the time we don't. Because if you have a right-brained evolved mind and a left-brain awakened mind, that just says that you're observing your experience in your right brain and having it in your in your left brain and having it in your right brain. So that's not a bad thing. That's a really good thing. That's definitely a psi state. That's a higher state of consciousness. Um, so the coherence reports are not the be all and end all. On the other hand, the more coherence you have in gamma, the more of this tracking you're going to see in both sides of the brain. And if they're firing together, say, doing a task, well, then what you've got is a brain that is so efficiently working together that when it moves into a connection with the field, you're going to have a whole dual hemisphere evolved mind pattern rather than one experiencing and one analyzing. See that? It's not that big a deal. Uh, it depends on the person and how they process, but uh, it does matter. So let me take you back into her session. I want to just show you a couple of interesting things. Um, and then uh, we're going to look at a little bit more because I'm mindful that what we want to do here is not just look at people's experiences, but also look at their um, at the data processing. And so the other thing I wanted to show you was her meditation is called Aria. Uh, it was a group synchronization exercise uh, wherein. Uh, people were asked to connect with each other. <clears throat> and you can look at her mind mirror summary brainwave pattern and see that she's definitely doing something in the higher frequencies. And um, those frequencies are uh, going to translate nine times out of ten into an extraordinary experience. Um, and that's exactly what she had. Um, she said that she graded it a um, table of subjective landmarks a six, which would be an evolved minor or super conscious pattern, centralization scale six. We flipped our centralization scale for the Monroe Institute because we we're using bar graphs. Um, but what it equates to is experience that's realer than real. And um, I just wanted to show you very quickly her, um, her patterns. Um, she has this first gamma surge at 7.35 minutes, and then she gets in touch with Bob Monroe, and it evens out. And uh, that's, some, that's a phenomenal amount of gamma, actually, compared to her alpha and the entire rest of her brainwave pattern. So it does rather look like either as a result of her uh, perception of a sp spirit beings or because... When she merges with spirit beings, they're carrying uh, voltages of light that affect her brain waves. I don't know which. No one knows which. And in fact, you know, it could be the 
very same thing <laughs> instead of a either or uh, a both and so something I wanted to mention and that was what her uh, experiences were she says that at one point everyone was riding in a spacecraft driven by the combined frequencies and telepathic thoughts of the group highly evolved light beings were watching as the whole group healed her dog <laughs> Jim you like that um, says this exercise felt peaceful calming and united in energy with no cracks in the group's energy uh, and uh, toward the end of it that's where she uh, identified in her post-exercise questionnaire she connected with uh, Bob Monroe and that was the brainwave pattern um, you can't ask for sharper uh, patterns uh, and she felt like that that was happening inside of an out-of-body experience um, so then to go on back to space place so that was an actual out-of-body um, exercise <clears throat> she said that she was in her body but not here on earth so this was some variation on an out-of-body experience and um, really what I just wanted to show you here was that she actually turned off the music uh, so this was completely without the help of binaural beats uh, or music and um, what she did in this meditation uh, was she made another connection uh, this time with her dog's higher self um, she said she got new pieces of information that related to herself and uh, her connection with her dog and a previous dog and new information on her family uh, and then some uh, spirit people showed up Einstein Bach and a neuroscientist who were teaching her new information which she felt like she downloaded and felt like she was always guided and supported by them and their light um, and she saw a very bright light uh, blue light and um, had an encounter all of them while receiving a download and she felt like uh, a new frequency level of consciousness uh, that was making her more of a light in this world and if you look at that pattern you got to say hmm maybe she did because that's a ton of gamma you know and if you look at brain waves in a very fundamental way they are moving light moving waves of light and so when someone says I perceived a beautiful blue color in my third eye you might well see a spike of gamma there or when they say um, I was communicating with these beings and downloading information and then I was surrounded in light well this is something you are very likely to see in the brainwave pattern and there it is for her uh, I have this composite display here uh, you can see that she starts out with with alpha and then drops the alpha and her theta gets stronger she's kind of going down into her lower and slower frequencies a lot here and that theta that blue theta is firing with that green alpha um, but most importantly this time not delta which would be uh, lost somewhere here in in a purple um, there it is uh, it's not delta that's kicking off the gamma it's the alpha and the theta uh, and it's take there's the delta hiding just there below that gamma surge in fact let me size this up a little so you can see it better um, that's a that's a very significant surge of gamma that lasts from about nine minutes to almost 20 minutes uh, and that is 
in the in the realm of the timeless <laughs> that is a lot of time and then um, the gamma drops for a little bit looks like she was moving around because there's all those artifact markers in there and then the gamma arouses again and then it drops back down um, and so the reason I wanted to show you this is because um, I broke this down for her into segments and said that if I had seen this by itself, I would have suspected signal quality problems or SEMG problems. But 30 seconds later, those brain waves went completely symmetrical. And then uh, there's a left hemisphere gamma surge that takes the attenuation from this 10 here to 15. So she's really putting out a lot of voltage just the kind of thing you would expect if she's really encountering light beings. 621, this beautiful evolved mind flare on the right. 1101, you know, it's bigger than a superconscious, 100 hertz superconscious pattern. Um, and then uh, close to an evolved mind on the right hemisphere, except for this theta right here. Um, but this also is 15, 15 microvolts. So, um, She's really uh, by herself, without benefits of the SAM beats, able to uh, move into higher states of consciousness. And then just for the fun of it, I want to show you two, two cute things. So in Earth Heart, this meditation um, was designed to help people uh, get in touch with the earth and there were even some Native American beats at the beginning and everyone had phenomenal experiences with it. Um, her brain waves are a bit quieter here. You see that? And she's got more amplitude here. So she actually did uh, have an experience in her lower frequencies this time where this upper gamma started to dec decrease. As a result, her scores went up, 71% awakened mind, 25% evolved mind. Well, a lower evolved mind score because she's got more distinction between the categories. Um, and then, but gamma synchrony, 70%, extremely high. And so what happened um, was that she, she did make those deep connections. She did have some gamma arouse. Um, she even had this massive delta uh, burst here, delta and theta, uh, and she has she didn't share what the insights were, but she had some very powerful insights. And for a protracted period of time, this is about um, five minutes that this went on. But what was really cool about it was that she reported that um, there was something going on with her legs that her she felt itching in her legs and her body and toward the end of it she was stretching her legs and um i said you know with that much gamma i'd be surprised if you didn't have some kind of energy field experiences which some might call kundalini i would um and uh and she just looked at me like oh well maybe so maybe not but then we go to the next meditation called metamorphosis and um, in this meditation, she, during this meditation, uh, it had been pre-planned for a friend of hers, I don't know if she was in Holland or the UK, but to teleport into the class. And, you know, as odd and strange as these things may sound, uh, I have to look at it from a practical standpoint and said well wait a minute if she really did teleport how would that affect the brain waves of the people in the class and so i was a little leery of this but she'd already made the plan and i said okay well if you know exactly what time that's going to happen then we'll just be on the lookout well so naturally i forgot about it but uh what m did was she decided that she would bilocate and go teleport into the home of her friend and that's exactly what she did she went oh it said he went to the woman's house in england she was reading her newspaper having tea with eclairs and um she said it was very tiring to do this and in fact her gamma just she's you can see she's losing her gamma 
because gamma is also associated with attentional awareness and this is a 31 minute meditation so um but the interesting thing was that she had this odd experience where she sort of lost her legs as if they were lifting up and disappearing evaporating somehow about the middle of the exercise and you can see that after this big gamma blast here um, this is exactly in the middle of the exercise where her gamma increases uh, and so does her delta so she's got this sort of um, connection with the field connection with higher frequencies and um, I wouldn't be a bit surprised I didn't hear any report about it uh, but I wouldn't be surprised that all of her friend came back to her later on and said, I saw you here. Why were you trying to drink my tea or something, you know? Um, and what's also interesting is that on the 100 hertz scale, the highest scores she's had yet for gamma synchrony, 81%. And that is just absolutely extraordinary, uh, a truly extraordinary um, finding. And so then I wanted to show you one last thing. Um, let me take all these guys out and uh, load the first session, free phase shift. I've already showed you her coherence. I want to show it to you again. I'll be nice and familiar. Uh, we had a coherence correlation coefficient here three and seven where we saw that her highest coherence was in the super high frequencies except for this little bit of delta here but really not much coherence at all uh, in her theta and uh, alpha gets better as she goes up to 10 hertz but not a lot so now we can make a comparison uh, and go to, um, let's see, metamorphosis, I think was the one I wanted to compare, the one we just looked at. If not that one, I'll show you another one as well. Go back to the correlation coefficient for that session. Yep. And now look what's happened during the week's training. Uh, from she let's see we have to make sure the scales are the same so 0 0.65 with point uh, 0 0.8 being in high coherence and above um, and 0 0.6 so her really now as at is as in metamorphosis and the meditation two meditations she did after that one um, her highest coherence is at um, 41 hertz to 41 to 42 hertz which is right where gamma becomes more coherent um, 40 hertz gamma is associated with brain wave and brain brain lobe coherence and look what's happened so she's lost coherence in the gamma not a whole lot if you look at this at 0.5, yeah, a lot there because that's 0.25, that's half as much. Um, let's see, I think I can get a marker. Let's kind of do a visual trending. All right, so it's 0.55. The visual trending would be about here, ignoring this. Well, maybe about here. So 0.3, so you can see that these, these gamma coherences decrease. Most importantly, her delta uh, and her alpha, her delta theta and alpha have all increased in coherence. And that's exactly what we want to see happen. Uh, and it looks like her 40 hertz gamma her coherence in 40 hertz gamma is partly responsible for that. Of course, you're training meditations all week long, so it's not one meditation that makes the difference. But taken together throughout the course of the five-day trainings, she has steadily gained coherence. 
And that is exactly what we want to see happen because that's going to be a grounded person, person more grounded in the low frequencies. If you are completely in your higher frequencies, you see, then there can be some Kundalini effects um, because your nervous system is going to ramp up as your brain is ramping up. Better to be grounded in the lower frequencies and then have, have some balance. So all in all, she had uh, a really extraordinary set of experiences. Now, um, we might as well, for metamorphosis, look at uh, her coherence summary uh, for that low delta and see if it's just as strong. not quite as strong so it really looks like um most of her changes were in theta and alpha i mean that's still really good that's very close to coherence actually there might be more bars closer to coherence uh in low delta but part of the reason i wanted to show you this is to uh, show you a little trick so you can actually look at any frequencies that you want to look at uh, in coherence summary reports. And to do that, you just go to configuration, uh, EEG bands configuration. Uh, I think I'd like to add four to six low theta. So I just say uh, add low theta. And then I'll tell it save and then continue. And we can try it out on her and just see what we get. Stand at the bottom. So yeah, she's doing pretty well there too. Um, it's still a mid-range uh, because 0.7 is coherence and the coherent summaries are the coherence displays. Um, but that's higher than she was to begin with for low theta. So over the course of the week, she definitely um, had some increases in um, coherence in the lower frequencies. Uh, and she stayed in mid-range coherence for the higher frequencies. And um, I'm still in the metamorphosis session, so I can look at either one of her composite summaries uh, for either side of the brain. Really, I just want to uh, look at delta amplitude. And so, you know how in a previous session we saw all those delta strikes one two three four with the right arrow and then one two down arrow to size up the data um, we saw all these delta strikes right where it looked like they were uh, even possibly here too uh, surge in this delta right before the surge in this gamma but what is this right here is that real delta until we had these windows well we couldn't really know um, we would have to have already done this uh, and know there was a problem or if we hadn't done this to look at that big strike of delta and say wait a second is that a problem and sure enough that's a signal quality problem so if you had done the signal quality windows and the SEMG artifact windows to begin with, you see, you would have the artifact markers in here, and this would be artifacted out, and there would be no chance of your thinking, oh, that she had a really great connection with the field, and something extraordinary happened, and so on and so forth, you see. Um, you would know immediately that that was just artifact, and most importantly, you would have taken that out of the data before you ran the mind mirror um, display, the summary. So yeah, so that's just one person. So the other person I want to show you uh, 
has got an interesting situation where she too, of course, is super conscious, uh, since that is the theme of our gathering here. Um, but she's already down in the low frequencies. Uh, so M, you saw, is way up in high frequencies, but by the end of the training, she dropped down into the lower frequencies and got more grounded, and she still had all of her same wonderful insights. Um, but this person, and I can say her name, she has given me permission, is Sarah, um, is already in the low frequencies to begin with. Um, just to say a little bit about her as introduction, um, she is uh, a senior executive uh, at a nonprofit environmental organization in Washington, D.C. Um, she's done a lot of shamanic, energetic uh, medicine training, 300 hours of it, as a matter of fact. And as you know, shamanic work is all about going down, 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 down. Um, through entrainment with the drumming or whatever methodologies are used. She's also done some energy work and she has, whereas M didn't have any meditation practice, Sarah um, has a regular morning meditation practice uh, of 20 minutes a day. Um, and uh, since 2001 has practiced Metta or loving kindness meditation. Um, plus, she also listens to Monroe Institute programs. She's attended 10 programs, and she listens to Hemisync uh, CDs every night as she's going to sleep, and it really shows in her brainwave patterns. She's got the gamma, and she's got the low frequencies to be able to um, balance them. And so looking at her mind mirror summary, uh, for eyes open during the opening baseline, what you see is a dominant alpha. Uh, and if you look at this alpha amplitude window here, I'll just size this up a little bit. You can see that um, she's got steady, stable, consistent alpha that absolutely stays in place. Uh, throughout the session. A dive here and a dive there, but if you see the solidity of these data strikes, um, everywhere you see solidity means that it's staying in place. It's firing, firing, firing. So, um, so this alpha, retention of this alpha with her eyes open, and this production of right brain gamma, for which she received a 63% uh, rewards uh, on the 64 hertz scale, um, awakened mind for this side of the brain, 74%, evolved mind, 31%. The combination of the steady and stable alpha, activity in the lower frequencies, and this gamma means that she's got eyes open, super conscious brainwave pattern, which is pretty rare. When she closed her eyes, look how beautifully this evened out. 90% awakened mind, 37% evolved mind, and 52% gamma synchrony. Uh, a gorgeous pattern. Now, when she got busy with the animal meditation, um, where she became a white owl, this is more of a left brain uh, processing of the information really in her uh, low, her high beta, low gamma, actually her mid gamma and upper gamma as well. Um, really beautiful brainwave patterns. And she uh, is a very uh, sensory person who perceives things quite vividly in meditation and, and can report back volumes of information uh, that are really interesting. Um, I want to show you uh, one thing about her pattern since I promised that this is about uh, data. Um, I will go back to the mind mirror and show you how we do these um, 
opening baselines and get that information. So, of course, file and open existing session. Opening baseline, here we go. And she's in position three. So we'll go uh, to the view. And then again, I'm not gonna get rid of all the little noise, noisy spikes of data, but just to review, we're gonna first look at signal quality for the left brain. Perfect. Signal quality for the right brain. Also perfect. This gives me an opportunity to repeat what I said earlier about SEMG being mistaken for gamma. So that's the right brain SEMG window. All right. Now we had no breaks in signal quality as you as you've just seen, but what about this? Are we going to say that one microvolt of uh, is of amplitude is her baseline and this is all junk? Well, hell, we have to go a searching again because there's no way to tell otherwise. Um, now, one thing that we can say though uh, is that this is a surge and steady and consistent. This is a surge that's steady and consistent. And we can also look at the numbers and say, wait, that's way below five. That's so far below five that even if this were real SEMG movement or tension artifact, it is not likely, it is not going to cause any problem at all uh, in terms of distortion of the brain waves. So SEMG is not a factor, but if I want to be absolutely, for study, I absolutely would take these out. Um, maybe they would make 1% difference, maybe they would make no difference at all, but um, I have seen them make a huge amount of difference. Uh, and, this, and the stronger, the taller the artifact uh, spike, the more careful I would be. Now these, these are really not such a big deal. Um, but if, and I've had many subjects like this, if you have spikes, spikes, spikes all over the place, that will profoundly affect the data. I've seen people go from lots to eh, not that much gamma just by taking all the spikes out. And, two or three out of eight people I monitored in the last program um, kept having artifact spikes and I got to where I was absolutely begging them, <laughs> please um, be still. Uh, so, and then the other thing I wanted to show you about this is if we just look at one hemisphere um, for her composite summary, and again, it's your choice what you use. I just use these because beta alpha. I mean, because beta is going to behave like the gamma. All right, and then four right arrows. So again, you see beautiful tracking uh, of her brainwave categories. I mean, this is definitely an organized mind. You see that? There may be interhemispheric differences, but these categories are firing together most of the time. Um, and here you even see the first hint of a phenomenon I'm going to show you called the alpha theta crossover, where the theta far exceeds the amount of alpha. Um, here I just wanted to show you uh, the extent of this gamma increase as she became the owl. So the visual, her feelings of uh, awe or reverence, uh, her 
attentional awareness or attentional focus, this is a change from 0.5 microvolts to at the highest peak, uh, over 1.5. She almost quadrupled uh, her gamma production. So, and again, the reason to show you this is because there are no bimodal beats, there's no sound beats, there's no help at all. This is just her own production. And so she has the ability through her meditation practice, and of course that's what organizes the brain more than anything else, is uh, consistent meditation, mental training. Um, she has the ability to go up, down, all around, anywhere she wants to go. The most important thing I wanted to show you was um, her next meditation uh, called Expansion. Um, so the nice thing about this training, uh, this was a super conscious mind training, uh, is that these meditations were guided and so I was able to match timing uh, with the brainwave events, which is what we always, as awakened mind trainers, always want to do, because that's where people get their landmarks. Um, I'll probably go back to the file because I have all that information already written into there. But for now, I just want to show you uh, this phenomenon while you can see it close up. So four, one, two, three, four arrows on the right. And actually you can already see the alpha theta crossovers here. Phenomenal. Look at her blue theta so far exceeding her alpha. Here, 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 here. So in this meditation, um, people are just asked to, uh, get in touch uh, with their hearts and uh, send love to themselves, uh, send love to other people, recognize that the real key to um, higher states of consciousness, if and when those involve gamma, uh, is to love, to feel love and compassion. So that's basically what the meditation said to do. And so you see here, look at her gamma come up at the five minute point and it stays up here and it peaks up here, peaks and it peaks. But as she starts to fire this theta, her gamma starts to decrease because she's shifting her concentration of consciousness from the high frequencies down to the low frequencies. And so why talk about this? Well, because the alpha theta crossover is directly associated um, with mystical or psi events, with uh, shamanic journeying, imagining or experiencing yourself as an animal, uh, becoming an animal, uh, transcendent spiritual illumination. Whenever you have those low and slow theta frequencies overtake the activity of those higher and usually dominant uh, alpha bridge frequencies, then something serious is going on here. <clears throat> and when someone, when we see it in the brain waves, we definitely want to pinpoint the timing and try to understand exactly what happened. So I'm going to go back to the file now. So that was the animal meditation and expansion was the very first uh, of the guided meditations. I didn't manage to show you this, but we'll, we'll get to it if we go back to the ballistas. That is the hemispheric balance, and uh, it just shows you what, average, on average, uh, is the dominant value of each frequency bar. Um, this is 0.5. That would be considered uh, a significant hemispheric imbalance. But anything uh, below 0 0.2 is not specific at all. That, too, is under coherence reports. Um, and so in expansion, um, she had this wonderful insight. It was about the quantum versus the physical world. Uh, what she realized was that particle was instantaneous knowing, 
and wave is learning uh, over time as the waves ripple out or spread out. Now this was incredibly meaningful to her and don't you know it, right when she had that insight is those theta crossovers. So uh, left hemisphere, uh, you can see this huge gamma. The right hemisphere is an evolved mind. Now you saw this with M as well, is that once you move into unity consciousness, that semicircular or fully circular pattern, this is you're, it's going to be as a result of a gamma spike or a gamma spike is going to come out of it. You just figure you've just made connection with the field. Something is going to happen. There's going to be some kind of energy transfer or exchange or receipt. Um, and then right after that, a few seconds after that, she plunged out of her right brain gamma into her theta delta, and that's the alpha theta crossover. You see how the theta frequencies are stronger than her alpha frequencies? And most importantly, you've got the bottom half of an evolved mind pattern. And then again at 21, 25, there's the crossover again. So that's where she had the particle wave insight. And I thought this was important to show to you because um, it's insights don't just come from gamma. I mean, you can, of course, People with awakened mind know that, but um, there seems to be an increasing sentiment that, oh, if I don't get to gamma, then I'm not going to uh, get an insight, and that's not true um, by any stretch. Uh, it's all connected, isn't it? Whether you go down or whether you come go up or whether going down causes higher frequencies or whether higher frequencies cause amplification in the lower frequencies, we don't know, but it's one system. Uh, and insights exist everywhere. Um, so she, because of her shamanic work, I think, is getting her insights in her lower frequencies. So the matrix, the main thing I just wanted to show you there um, was, uh, is here in the file. So 78% on the 100 hertz scale for the awakened mind, 71% for gamma synchrony, extremely high score. Um, now there is uh, SAM technology, there were SAM technology beats in these guided meditations and in the matrix you are actually asked to connect with the energy centers in your body to become aware of your body as a matrix and energy uh, what uh, network an energetic network and um, especially then you move to the chakra system and so I just captured these very cool patterns. Uh, she was at her third eye and she saw a rainbow uh, and then a tear, a rainbow eye and then there was a tear in it and she went into the tear and had some insights. Um, at the third, still on the third eye, this is a hundred hertz gamma synchrony pattern. Um, at the throat center, uh, the blue, she was imagining herself in blue waters, and there it is again, that evolved mind on the right, and that beautiful 100 hertz uh, awakened mind uh, on the left. And then I showed her these as well. Um, in the heart center, she imagined her dog licking her face and um, had this beautiful evolved mind on a delta pedestal in the left. Um, and then love from the heart to the ego. She was balancing her chakras toward the end and had this evolved mind on the left. That's, that's the harder one to get, the evolved mind circle on the left. Everybody can get it with the feelings, not everybody, but most people can get it with the feeling sensing right brain. But when you can transfer that evolved mind, 100 hertz evolved mind, left brain, that is really saying something. And then at 32 minutes, she, instead of working on a issue, a personal issue, just started working with her chakras and increasing her creativity. Um, and that's a 64 hertz evolved mind pattern. Um, 
And then this is the main thing I wanted to show you here. Uh, at the moment, the instruction was to bring to mind a memory of love and happiness. There went her gamma. That entire period of time uh, was gamma production. So this is how, you know, I say this on interviews and I've said it in books. I mean, this is the dead on proof that gamma is love and compassion and feelings and uh, that those feelings bring about some sort of energetic blossoming that blossoms into gamma. So, you know, this is the kind of landmark that is extremely helpful to anyone, self trainers, practitioners, clients, researchers, subjects. Um, if you are in your head and you can't connect with love and compassion, there are other ways, oh, we can't connect with gamma, there are other ways to do it through attentional awareness. But your quickest and surest bet and safest bet is happiness and love. And then I wanted to show you one last um, of hers called The Wise One, which is my poisonal favorite. Um, I wrote these meditations. See this, see how nice it is? You can absolutely get the timing in a guided meditation that you correlate the timing, annotate the timing. Um, she gets to the blue sphere in this meditation. Her gamma increases. And of course the blue sphere, blue is the color that excites um, theta. And you see her theta increasing just as her gamma increases. And there she's got a crossover, an alpha theta crossover right there. Um, ex experience of joy, bliss in the white sphere. Another theta bump right after that. Um, it's really nice uh, to have these windows and these correlations. So the wise one's my favorite because um, it's a very simple idea and it's an old idea, but it's an idea that we all as spiritual beings moving toward uh, our heart connection with ourselves and other, other people and all things um, can do on a daily basis. And that is, as in this meditation, to walk into an environment, notice what's there, excite your alpha senses, um, take a path, walk around, up and down, all of those prepositional words that start to animate theta, and then uh, animate, if you can, your love for yourself or anything else, some of us love dogs more than anything else and find unconditional love in dogs, cats. And just imagine that there's a wise one sitting on a boulder or somewhere in that environment. It doesn't have to be a forest, can be any place. And just connect and listen. And so that's what Sarah did in this meditation and everyone else. And it's proven to be incredibly uh, effective. And you can see here, the wonderful symmetry uh, that uh, she produced during this meditation. She was so comfortable with uh, connection with the wise one that she was just able to imagine the, uh, well, obtain the insights and then have a sense that she was, the wise one was dissolving into her and that came so naturally to her that she didn't even have to wait for the instruction. <laughs> she did it beforehand. And she she had a she met a unicorn in the forest that tuned up her chakras and um, just had this beautiful experience of uh, herself as a golden orb. The unicorn told her that she was a golden orb. And um, then when she, after she integrated, she well, when she integrated, she had a huge burst of uh, 
energy flaring through her body, which is typically going to rushes, vibrational rushes, um, which is typically going to cause some gamma or be the result of it uh, in terms of being able to receive it. And um, she integrated with the wise one and on the way out of the forest, all the animals bowed and um, as she passed by and that made her feel really good. And then she had an, a landmark for her session was a symbol of a upside down rainbow with a heart in the center. 76% on the 100 hertz scale, 76% awakened mind, 28 evolved mind, 66 gamma synchrony. Um, and then what happened? Where these beautiful composite screens, which everybody has. Um, she's relaxing here. You can see her alpha is firing beautifully, and so is her theta. She walks into the forest, and then she really starts to get into the beauty of the place. And her alpha really starts to fire. You see all that heavy green right there? That says she, you know, this is 256 samples per second. So when you see, um, that's a lot of seconds right there, when you see that uh, heavy coloration like that then she meets the wise one and uh, her alpha almost drops out as her uh, as she goes deeper because now she's in her gamma see her gamma there uh, her theta is dropping out delta is dropping out she's really just going all the way up into her gamma um, she communicates with uh, the wise one telepathically, and the moment she is instructed to do that, whop, up comes her alpha bridge to carry that information through. And then the wise one tells her about her greatest gifts, and that green alpha starts to flare as the bridge is open and carries that information. And then uh, this has could have been artifact. Um, we'll look at it in a second. But... Um, it's, that's why it's grayed out, but this is the period in which it touches her, she touches whoever, wise one touches her crown, and then she starts to apply her insights to her life. Well, that's awakened mind work, isn't it? You have to go down to really uh, rewire those neurons in your theta frequencies so that you can overwrite with the new information. And that's what she did. Look at her theta coming up like that. She's rewriting, but her gamma's coming down because she's plunging deeper and deeper and down inside herself. And then the wise one dissolves into her. Her gamma comes up a little bit. Then she leaves the forest. Um, and... And then this is where the animals bow to her, the alpha increases, and then she sends the information to her conscious mind, and then this is where she, sorry, she sends the information to her conscious mind, um, and so the animals are bowing here, sends information to her conscious mind, and there's her alpha bridge up to conscious awareness, um, not showing beta, but you can bet that beta got it because everything flared simultaneously in an aha like event and then she sends uh, the info to her conscious mind and bop out comes uh, this alpha flare that marks the transfer of the information and then she sets a landmark um, and then she leaves down goes her camel so what I really just wanted to share with you there um, is uh, what happens um, for two very different people, one of whom is operating, both of whom are operating with great ease in the higher frequencies. One of them, though, less balanced in the lower, I don't want to say less balanced, uh, less settled in the lower frequencies. One of them very comfortable in the low frequencies. The, that person being shamanic Sarah, the other person being, you know, the kind of more mediumistic person, M, uh, who is communicating with spirits. Both super conscious, 
but kind of in different ways. It's not that they couldn't both shift, but their signature patterns, that is the patterns that they're most comfortable with, uh, are those of um, their kind of opposite ways of approaching the earth, life in the earth. There's one other little thing I want to show you uh, before we close, uh, just to round this out. Uh, and that would be Sarah's coherence measurements at the beginning of um, the training versus the end of the training. So I've got to, there, good, I've got her. So let's go to this one. Yep, uh, and just get the correlation coefficient. It's forgotten who I am now. I have to put these numbers in. And then we'll go to uh, say, let's go to the one that she really liked. Uh, she gave a 10 on the mystical scale, and that is the non-guided meditation called higher. And so I'm going to um, just show you the uh, coherence uh, correlation coefficient for that meditation. So you can see how her brain waves changed uh, during, the, during the training. All right, so we said that 0 0.8 in this one is correlation co is is actually high coherence uh, I'll lose the definition but let's just call it up here somewhere uh, and um, so you can see that so this is the beginning and this is not the ending one but one of the ending ones so where she gained coherence comparing these frequencies she gained coherence in her high frequencies by spending a lot of time in her high frequencies and her low frequencies. That's a pretty significant change. Um, as a matter of fact, um, let's see. So that is point eight. So this scale for some reason I don't understand but you would want to be aware of this it's actually going down to zero four and I can't control it so this is actually saying that in her high frequencies she was far below she was below the bottom of the scale but by the end of the week she was above the zero point and she was moving into mid-range in her high frequencies and so is there much of a change here? 0 0.6. A little bit, a, a half of a point value here. Uh, but she has more coherence at about 3 hertz, which is the bottom end of her theta, or the top of her delta. I wish I could mark these up, but you actually can't. She's got more coherence here at 6 hertz. You can compare this right here at 0.5. This is actually 0.4.5. So some of her lower frequencies became more coherent in all of her higher frequencies. Let's see where this really starts to go down from. It starts, it go, bottoms out to zero, all of this. All of these frequencies from here, 12, 14 hertz, have gained massively gained in coherence during the week's training. So yeah, I mean, speaking of people coming at things from different vantage points, uh, Sarah spent more time in her low frequencies, which increased coherence in her gamma, which could very well have increased coherence in her theta, because theta and gamma are very linked. Uh, 
And then M gained coherence, spent all that time in her already mostly coherent high frequency theta, but by the end of the training had become far more coherent in the low frequencies. So all of this is to say that we have the tools to um, give people very explicit information about um, how their brain waves are behaving, how they, why they are uh, progressing or behaving better. And um, we can prepare reports that show this in great detail to people. And um, it's just simply a matter of knowing how to use the windows. And I hope I've succeeded in showing you that during this program. Um, and if you have any questions, of course, you can uh, email me. Uh, you should be able to find most everything in the user manual, except for the information related to coherence, um, that and the EEG bands configuration. That is strictly in the Mind Mirror uh, features guide, uh, and that is an add-on. But it is very well worth it, you know, because to go back to where we started with this program, um, the bottom line here is that it's fine to, in a size state, have the brain doing two different things in each hemisphere, or one different thing in each hemisphere. But um, for the most part, we want coherence to increase. We want amplitude symmetry to increase. We want that waveform merging, that phase coupling of the waveforms, so that the brain powers up, because when it powers up, it becomes more efficient. Um, and something I didn't mention before, forms new brain cells. That's the, one of the main um, benefits of gamma. Um, but it's also, as you've seen, that that gamma makes other frequency bands coherent. So um, people who aren't grounded can become more grounded, and you can see how that happens. Uh, and people who are uh, operating in lower frequencies, you can see that um, by becoming more symmetrical, you're going to get greater access to those higher frequencies, which do that mighty fine work for you. And so with lower frequencies. So uh, I think that's the end of our program. Wait, was that a question? No, I'm just uh, looking forward to the next time, whenever that is. Excellent. Well, next time we're going to do a questions and answers um, webinar. So we hope you and anybody and everybody else will uh, just bring things they don't understand. Um, you know, if there's something in any of your TMI reports that is a puzzlement to you, this would be a perfect time to bring that. Um, you haven't got a mind mirror yet, but um, certainly if anything uh, crops up a, in with regard to this program, uh, this would be the time. All right, see you next time.